Hi you guys, uh, this is another video here, a little tutorial on how to get to use or how to get uh, light portable security to run on a USB drive so that you can use it on another computer or if you want to use it on the same computer and you want to run it off of the uh, USB drive, it's up to you. Um, this is mainly targeted for people that want, are on the go, don't have a laptop or instead of carrying a whole laptop you can carry your USB drive any computer you come across you do a restart use your USB flash drive as the operating system and you'll boot into a Linux uh, based uh, operating system that will allow you to browse the internet securely and everything and anything that you do on there does not remain on the computer that you used so that if you're sending email or whatever you just don't want to leave any of that information or the websites that you visited on that computer everything will reside on your flash drive Alternatively, you can use a CD. Uh, you can run it off a of CD-ROM as well. However, uh, one thing to note is that whatever computer you're using this on would have to have the ability to run off of USB drive or off the CD-ROM. So sometimes, depending on where you go, uh, those computers may have those features disabled by the administrators. Uh, example being a library, uh, school computers. Uh, some may have them blocked, some may not. So the best way to find out is restart it. Press either the F8, F12, or the delete key. Usually those, depending on the computer manufacturer, will give you the, the startup menu. It'll ask if it wants to start off of a hard drive, CD-ROM, or the flash drive. So if you get the, that menu, you know, that's a good way to go. Select your flash drive if you're using a flash drive, or select CD-ROM if you're using a CD. Um, and you're good to go from there. Uh, if those computers have a cable connection to the internet, awesome. If they use Wi-Fi or wireless internet, you'd have to connect. Uh, you'd have to have the um, the name, uh, or if it displays the name already, you'll have to have the password to, to connect, and you know you'd be able to browse on the internet. Now keep in mind also that uh, LPS or Light Portable Security has two uh, different versions. They've just re uh, released. And to get that, you're going to go into Google. You're going to select uh, Light Portable Security. You'll see right here it says LPS Public. You're going to go ahead and click on that. It'll bring you to the website. Scroll down. Click on LPS Public web page. And in here, it gives you um, all the information about it and it tells you which one you want to download. Uh, you can download, download the LPS Public ISO image or the Deluxe, which includes. Uh, it's actually the same version as the LPS Public Edition, but it also includes OpenOffice Adobe Reader software. So it's it's up to you. And you can see here the links uh, that are included here for the Quick Start Guides, Data Sheet, Users Manual. Um, you know, basically it'll show you uh, how to use this. So you can download download whichever one you want to use. Once you have downloaded it, it's going to download as it says here an ISO file. If you have Windows 7 or Windows Vista, I believe, already have that feature, you can just double click on the file once it's uh, finished downloading and it'll give you the option to burn it onto a disk or a DVD. It's not that big a file, uh, so I would recommend just using a CD. Uh, DVD would be kind of overkill, it's too large a, a disk, too, too much capacity for that. So, unless you want to save information to the DVD, uh, if you have a DVD reader or writer, you can do that. However, everything will remain on the disk. There's no way to uh, erase it unless it's a DVD-R disk, which um, I have not tested whether that works or not. However, if you're using a flash drive, you can use a flash drive to save information there. You can delete it. You can, you know, you can read and write uh, and remove uh, files if you so wish to. So this is the actual website you can get. It. This is actually created by the United States Air Force. Um, so that their employees or military members can log into their computer systems remotely from another computer if they're outside the base and still maintain the security uh, to send and receive information that they need to uh, you know whatever they need to do so let's go ahead and get started how you're going to go ahead and get this to run on your flash drive well since this is a Linux based operating system you will need something that's called unit boot in uh, this little piece of software is freeware or free software you can use this um, 
uh, free of charge. You can download it, install it, and it is available for um, Windows and as well as uh, Mac OS 10 and Linux as well if you're using a Linux computer. So whichever one you're using, you're gonna go ahead and download it and get it installed. And here it'll give you the requirements, features. These are just um, screen captures of, of what it supports and how it's installed. And basically tells you all the operating systems that you can install, as long as they're Linux ba uh, Linux based. So you know, kind of gives you a breakdown if you want to go ahead and read that. You know, I would strongly suggest it. It does give you a walkthrough on how to get that to work. However, I'm going to give you a quick uh, tutorial on how to get this to install your uh, LPS into your flash drive using this little application. So I've already downloaded it and installed it. Uh, let's go ahead and open that up. Now for faster access to it, I put it on my desktop. So I'll go ahead and um, click that. So it does have to run as administrator. So let me go ahead and enter my password. Well, let's go ahead and minimize this. And there you have it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and connect your USB flash drive. Now note that the flash drive that you're going to use, um, I'm using a two gigabyte flash drive. There it is, it's a Kingston flash drive. You can use a two gig, four gig, eight gig, 12 gig, whatever size you want. Uh, I believe even a one gig flash drive will work. However, nowadays it's very rare when you do find a one gig or less flash drive, unless you have a spare one from way back in the day. You can use that. I'm not entirely sure how much or how small a flash drive it will support. Um, I do have a 512 megabyte flash drive laying around. I'll try that next and see if that works. I'll put it on the notes if I can, uh, or if I can find the flash drive. I really don't know where I left it. However, uh, once you have this up and running, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and look for the ISO distribution. Basically, it asks you which version of Linux you want to use. And the number. So, say for example, you want to use, um, let's see, Ubuntu. Let's see if Ubuntu is right here. Yep, Ubuntu 10.4 Live. And it gives you all the other versions that are available up to uh, 10, 11.10. .10. So, that's, that's one way to go. However, what this is going to do is it's going to download it off the internet straight off of the Ubuntu website. And it's going to take a while. So I would suggest you go directly to the Ubuntu website if you're going to install Ubuntu or any other Linux uh, operating system for that matter. However, these distributions do require more than two gigs. So for this this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and just click this image because we've already downloaded the uh, the LPS off of this website. So we should already have that uh, downloaded. We're gonna also to note make sure that you know which letter like Kingston right here it's letter J it's very very critical that you know which letter your flash drive is set to um, for some reason it's not detecting it let me go ahead and close this out go ahead and connect the flash drive again it tends to do that however so just keep that in mind go ahead and get this started again And there we have it. So go ahead and click this disk image J. There we go. All right. So now we're gonna look for the ISO, the file that you downloaded, which is your LPS. And again, we're gonna go ahead and click on a desktop. That's where I saved it for easy access. Now I did download both, so it's got the public and a public deluxe. Let's go ahead and click this one. Oh look, 391 megabytes. So a 512 gig, uh, I'm sorry, 512 megabyte flash drive should work just fine, even for this one. Um, but I would recommend using that one on a flash drive that small. However, two gig flash drive, that would work just fine. So go ahead and click on open. Shows up in there. You're gonna click OK. Now if you click OK, please note that the flash drive should be empty. Anything that's on the flash drive, if it is important to you, it will get deleted. So if there's anything in there, pictures, documents, uh, music, anything that you have on that flash drive that you do not want to lose, 
make sure you either put it on a separate folder on your desktop create another folder someplace else or copy it to another location because it will get deleted so once you have this up and running and you have copied everything out of there that you need or if it is a blank flash drive you just go ahead and click OK it's gonna run through a process um, I've already done this but uh, just for the sake of this let's go ahead and click OK just so you know Now do keep in mind sometimes it does hang up like that. It'll seem like it's not working, but it is. If you were to uh, look at your flash drive, you will note that it is flashing. So it, it is actually writing those files onto your onto your drive. So be patient with it. It can take a few minutes, especially with the larger uh, operating systems like uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, anything else that you'd want to try and run it through your flash drive. They will, they will take a lot longer than that. Sometimes they can take up to about maybe 10, 15 minutes, depending on how large the file is. Now, of course, you know the the larger the operating system, the larger your flash drive needs to be. Um, same thing if you're gonna burn it into a disc, you need a larger disc. So DVDs usually the way to go with uh, with newest releases of uh, Linux. Some can run a regular DVD. So you, you know once you're gonna go ahead and download something like that make sure you read through the website it'll tell you the requirements that you need to burn into a disk or a flash drive and generally it'll give you a step-by-step -step process on how to do that from there go ahead and pause this while it finishes oh it's almost done there we go there you go now it asks you to reboot now that's if you want to restart your computer and run it off of this particular computer uh, or you can click exit if you're going to use it on a different one. I don't want to do it here. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the laptop. So I'm going to go ahead and click exit. And it's good to go. You can go ahead and unplug your flash drive. And um, we'll go ahead and try it on a laptop. So go ahead and pause this. Okay, so this is a laptop we're going to go ahead and run this on. It's an IBM uh, X41 tablet. This is the actual flash drive. It's a Kingston uh, Data Traveler 2 gigabyte can't really see it um, anyway so let's go ahead and put this on the uh, USB uh, connector go in the right there you go so we're gonna go ahead and click the power button and on this particular model we're gonna go ahead and press the F12 key or is it the F8 oh there we go it's the F8 so let me go ahead and increase the, um, the light on this thing one sec where are you? There we go. So there it is. It gives you the choice. Boot menu. Uh, you can see here uh, USB HDD or hard disk drive. Kingston Data Traveler. Or the actual hard drive on the device. So we're going to go ahead and use that. Um, it actually highlights which one you want to use. So we're going to select the Kingston. Click enter. And it starts running the, uh, the Linux uh, version of the operating system you can see it's actually flashing and there it's loading ATSPI Technology Branch Air Force Research Laboratory uh, you can press the F2 for startup messages go ahead and click that what that will do is it'll give you the uh, well either way whether you do it or not is it gives you the startup messages Pressing F2 just gives you that. You don't have to do it, so just so you know. And in here, it gives you. Um, can't see it. Hang on. There you go. So it says LPS user agreement, choose option, then OK to confirm, display user agreement, agree and continue, or rejecting shutdown. So you can go ahead and click on the display user agreement it gives you all the information that you know that it you know the, the, actually the terms of you know that allows you to use this so go ahead and click agree and continue click OK and there it is uh, you can see here on the top I got Firefox, Open Office, uh, safely remove USB storage, USB device, 
and user's guide. So if you double click on the user's guide, it gives you everything you need to know on how to use it, how to get it up and running, how to uh, set up your security. Uh, if you're going to connect to a computer, say, back home from the internet and stuff like that, that gives you um, all the steps. Uh, if you can see here, it gives you the information on the battery, volume, you can actually turn up or down the volume. Here's a connection. It shows you all the available connections that are um, in the area. So you're going to go ahead and click and enter the password for each one of those. Um, let's see here. Those are all the options. Again, you can see um, the uh, Adobe Reader, OpenOffice, Firefox, File Manager. It gives you instant messaging through uh, Pigeon. Uh, email, encryption wizard, documentation, utilities. So at this point, you're ready to go and get this uh, working. You can, if you're already connected to the internet, uh, to any internet connection, just go ahead and open your Firefox. And there you go. It actually brings you to a welcome screen here. It gives you a a quick guide on how to get this uh, running but uh, this is it it's actually it's actually running this is actually what it looks like it's running on a, a laptop through USB so anything you do here again remains on your flash drive and once you shut down everything gets erased because nothing is actually saved on this computer on the hard drive everything is running off of memory and when you turn off the computer the memory gets erased so nothing remains so if you're using a friend's computer, a uh, school computer, and you don't want your stuff to be tracked, this is a, a good way to go. Uh, shutting down. Go ahead and click on that. I'm going to click on shut down. And it gives you the option to reboot or shut down. Go ahead and click shut down. It asks you, are you sure you want to, uh, to shut down? Click yes. And that's it. It's off. Remove it and you're good to go.